Hi everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of The Flag Goes Up. It's me Shivang and I'm joined by Bhanu today and we'll discuss all the major transfers which happened in the world of football around the Europe and globe. And before I begin, let me ask Bhanu that this was a crazy transfer window. Like Messi going to PSG, Cristiano Ronaldo coming back to Manchester United. I mean, wow, what happened there, Bhanu? Yeah, it actually sort of feels like you're playing FIFA on your career mode. Exactly. <laughs> Many of us thought <laughs> I, the yeah, same. I, right. <laughs> yeah, of course. I I don't think anybody would have expected Messi and uh, Ramos to actually play together. So, yeah, it's going to be... A, it was a crazy transfer window, yeah. Right, right. And Cristiano Ronaldo almost, you know, joining Manchester City one day. And you get the news that another night he's going on to you know get back to his old home manchester united you see i'm wearing the jersey we were on aldo right <laughs> so okay sure. let's begin with the transfers without wasting any time so first one we'll discuss is lionel messi as usual a free transfer to psg manu what are your thoughts on this i mean it is a win-win situation for psg i think it is an absolute great piece of business for him to get a player like Messi and that two for free. It is a great piece of business for their club and for their image as well because you know the kind of popularity Messi will bring with him. It will be a great thing for PSG. The commercial side. And of of course he'll get them the added bonus. Absolutely. (laughs) I think getting them to the further stages in that Champions League. Yeah, they might be, you know, targeting now for the Champions League win finally. They have reached the final, they have reached the semi final so many times, but the final piece of the, you know, the puzzle is missing, right? So, moving on, the another transfer which, you know, shocked the whole football world was Cristiano Ronaldo finally returning to Manchester United. So, yeah. go on, Manu. Uh, <laughs> when I started hearing all those rumors about, you know, he was going to City at first. I, the, my first reaction was that now we've got to support Manchester City in the Premier League. <laughs> but true. actually, I was really happy for him that he ended up joining United and uh, it was his home for, I think, five, six, seven years or something. Yeah, six, so seven. it'll be emotional for him and it'll be, of course, emotional. For you and other Man United fans as well. Absolutely, absolutely right. You know, the childhood, the childhood was the dream of the childhood. We started watching football with Cristiano at United, and then he comes back seriously. So moving on, let's uh, hear another transfer. You know, the deal which was completed in the last time uh, moments of the deadline. It was the Edward Kamavinga going to uh, Real Madrid finally. So yeah. Madrid saved it for the last, I think, uh, didn't they? Yeah, I think they they pulled a great deal out Eventually. of the bag there. I didn't really expect Kamavinga to arrive in this window, but he is a good player. And uh, nice. I don't think I have seen a lot of him, but I think he is good in tight spaces and he can fill in for Casemiro as well and be a future, I think, replacement for him. But I don't think he'll go straight into the starting eleven, but... He'll be the uh, he'll be a one for the future. Absolutely, and he has the age on his side. He's still very young. He'll learn in the team. He has yeah. Ancelotti as the coach, so it's a win-win situation for all the parties involved. Even Rene, they wanted to sell him because he was not, you know, willing to sign another contract. His contract was up in twelve months' time, so they didn't want him to go for free. So they, you know, recaptured thirty-five million I think, mm-hmm. with add-ons, thirty-five million euros. The deal yeah. was completed. Yeah, so moving on to Arsenal's business now. We have Martin Odegaard finally transferring from Real to Arsenal. I see a smirk on your face for yeah. when I mentioned Arsenal's. Yeah, we know they are at the bottom of the league, but still, they got the business done, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's good for Arsenal. They get a good, they get a flair player who can create a lot in the final third. And, you know, he can... Uh, end up breaking teams that set up with a low block at the back and uh, so he'll be good for that but I don't know 
to buy chose arsenal because exactly. considering the situation arsenal is in right now so but uh, it is i think it's his choice so who are we to say more playing time yeah right he wanted more playing time and he wasn't getting that yeah. real so it's fine yeah so moving on to chelsea's business we have romelu lukaku who was signed for more than 100 million mm-hmm. euros and it's another homecoming for another player like he was playing at chelsea before then he moved to everton then to manchester united and then going to inter for his more playing time and then he returns to chelsea once again so a number 9 for chelsea replacing most probably kai uh, this uh, timo werner in the team and a good finisher i would say so what do you think about him yeah of course i mean lukaku can't bring can bring the kind of presence you know drogba had at chelsea for a long time and he can be that sort of striker who bullies the opposition defenders and he you know he can put his physical aspect into the play yes. and help chelsea a lot and give them a different sort of dimension that i think timo werner can't really provide So yeah, it's a great deal for Chelsea. And I do hope for Chelsea's sake he has improved his first touch also. <laughs> <laughs> so another Chelsea signing it's uh, Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid. Well, it's a loan signing, but they also completed the signing in the last few moments of the transfer window deadline. So you know, coming from the La Liga, you are you know a sort of expert there. So what? How do you rate this signing for Chelsea? I think Saul Saul has a bit of staggered his progress. I think has staggered a bit in the last two three years. But I do think it's more to do with the kind of roles uh, Simeone has him doing in the last two three years. I think he has played a lot in the left in the left back position for the uh, Atletico side, and uh, he's is a bit versatile and he uh, can I think sort of play with. or he knew uh, georginio as well cause he he likes to get in those tackles and he is a proper box to box player he will support the team in the attack and in the defense as well so yeah they i don't think he'll straight up uh, this lodge either the kante or georginio but i do think yeah he can be a great addition to the midfield yes right and i still can't forget his uh, goal against bayern in the knockouts you know Years ago, Rodriguez yeah. is back, and he scored that run and that finish. They were phenomenal, both of them. Right. So moving on, we have Jack Grealish. Uh, what do we say about him? He was, you know, <laughs> he was in, in, like itching for a move away from Aston Villa. So finally, City uh, get get him for almost hundred million pounds. Big money signing. Great expectations. What do you think, Manu? I. I don't really think City needed to sign Grealish. I think they had a they have a lot of players kind of who kind of play the same sort of role that Grealish usually does. And uh, I think they yeah. needed a striker in there. They don't really have a number nine in there anywhere. So and we heard uh, Guardiola just repeat that he sort of prefers Gabriel Jesus to play that role out wide and. if he does play out wide then they don't even have a single number 9 in there so yeah i do do think they didn't really sort of need grealish and i yeah, i think it is a good move for grealish cause he does end up joining a premier league uh, the premier league champions and the other club who will be competing uh, for the champions league title as well so yeah right right so aston villa to Ch- man city it's a big step up seriously Okay, so, so moving yeah. on, uh, we have uh, as we again discussed uh, Sergio Ramos to PSG, who will be playing with Lionel Messi. So how do you rate your captain going away? Your both central uh, defenders, like trusted defenders, with Rafael Varane moving to United, Ramos to PSG. How do you, as a Madrid yeah. fan, rate this signing? I mean, what's your thought on this? I do. I think they'll get. a proper leader leader figure in that defense i don't think we'll see psg bottling any more three lane they and four lane yeah, and it's like exactly. that <laughs> at, at new get, camp he'll get them fired up <laughs> right 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 and and ramos is a great defender as well so 
Though he's uh, you know comparatively he's uh, aged you know, but still he's a that leader figure you just mentioned, and he's just the total package. You can't you know, really doubt this man, right? So moving on again, PSG signed Ashraf Hakimi from Inter Milan for almost 70 million euros. A fullback, very attacking mind player, and I think he suits the system as well. Yeah. How do you, what do you think about him? I I think he's the one of the best wing backs in the world right now, Hakimi. The way he has progressed over the years. Uh, but I don't really think I've seen him play in a four-man defense before, so. We'll have to see how Pochettino actually uses him. But I do think he is a great wing bang And I think he assisted on his debut or something. So, yeah, yeah right. he, he'll be a great signing for them. Right, right. So, we can wind up with the, all the major transfers. And one of the big names which we missed out, like, who didn't complete his transfer in the VRs of the transfer deadline, it was Kylian Mbappe. A 220 million euro bid rejected by PSG from Real Madrid. And now he's potentially going to sign a pre contract in January. And I can see the smile on your face. It's already, you know, glowing. So you can expect uh, Kylian Mbappe to play for your team next season, right? Yeah, but I would have preferred, you know, if he would have arrived this season. But because you. Never really know what happens in a year. Maybe PSG wins the Champions League and he feels like he wants right. to say. But yeah, all the news we got this season, I think he wanted to actually leave. And uh, he was there. Uh, they have kept him there against his will. But he has been respectful to PSG. And uh, I think, uh, I do think Madrid will eventually sign him up and. Uh, Sign, he will sign that pretty agreement in January, but let's see what happens. Yeah, we never know in football what happens. And you know, uh, yeah, winding up with the things I just uh, exactly. forgot to mention Antonio Griezmann, the Atletico Madrid player before who joins Barcelona, gets a huge hefty wage of 850 million, 850 k's of uh, weekly wages, and then now he's again going to Atletico Madrid on the loan to obligation to buy option. So what is this business? I mean, Bano, I couldn't understand this business done uh, by Barcelona. They let P- uh, Messi go and they couldn't even register Aguero, Dipe. You know, they had their issues with the finances. But this transfer, it's so weird. I mean, on so many levels. What do you think about it? Yeah, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on at Barca. What are they smoking over there? <laughs> I, they ended up saying... Is selling Messi because they couldn't afford his wages, and after that, they actually they sold. If you, I think, don't think we covered that this sold Emerson to Tottenham Hotspurs this season. And yeah, Emerson right. had but, just joined Barcelona. But Banu, they are Tottenham Hotspurs. Banu, they are Tottenham Hotspurs. They are bottlers, so I didn't think it was you know necessary <laughs> to cover that. Anyways, you can go on. Yeah. But... But yeah, but I don't think what the uh, what sort of a transfer was this because uh, as Messi was gone, I think I sort of expected Griezmann to play a central role, the sort of role Messi used to play in that Barcelona team. But they ended up selling him and they got Luke De Jong from Sevilla in his place. Right. I mean that guy doesn't even start for Sevilla, and you got him as. I don't know main striker or what they're going to play. For what, Barca. A mess. what a mess! So, Barca yeah, is in, they're in deep. You know, I don't want to use the Barca word, but they're in deep shit. Shambles, man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, their front three this season right now is Brathwaite, Depay, and De Jong. And <laughs> I, I, I mean, just... who would have thought from Messi, Neymar, and Mbapp- Suarez to exactly. Brathwaite, De Jong, and uh, yeah, and Aguero is still not fit to start the game, so he has an injury, yeah. he's not playing. It's totally shambles of a club. Anyways, so we wind up here with the, today's short episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening to us. Do subscribe our channel. Thank you.